Our health coach training. So good evening. This is Craig Blanchett, and I'm a global director with Take Shape for Life. Um, honored to be part of what they call Team Global. I've been coaching for six years uh, this May, so it's been my six year anniversary. And um, it's uh, we've got a fun little um, meeting tonight scheduled, or we got a couple things we want to talk about. Um, for those of you that uh, looks like all of you guys have been here for a little while. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, uh, uh, two things as we get started, um, there is an event that you want to mark your calendars for. It's on May 17th, so it's coming up here. It's coming Tuesday, I believe, and um, it's called um, The Benefits of Health Coaching with Dan Bell, and that hopefully sounds familiar because we had one of those towards the end of, of um, April. And we had so many people come. I had over a thousand people come, and it was it was really successful. And that people loved the Q and A fresh format that we decided to do an encore presentation. And so, um, one of the concepts that I was thinking about today, as I was had a meeting with Stephanie, is um, it's some of the information in this meeting, or even in this meeting or going to convention, or, you know, all these listening to the habits of health call. Some of this, you, you're probably going to th hear things that you've heard before, but how long has it been since you've heard it? So the concept that I want you to think about is it doesn't always have to be new, but it can be renewed in your mind. And so when was the last time that it was renewed about the glycemic index? or about that it's important that I work out or community or support or drinking water or sleep or any of those kinds of things. And so we constantly need to be, even though it's not new, we need to renew those ideas in our minds because if we forget these things or if we forget to do them, it's not going to go well for us. So, um, and I'd like to have, uh, Kim, you sounded like that resonated with you quite a bit. So I'd love for you to have uh, offer some comments and the rest of you that would like to comment, jump in after her. Well, I, I just, um, I wrote that down. I, I like the way um, that sounded, you know, I think, boy, how true is it that we, we've heard things before, but we just need to be reminded or how quickly do we, um, Maybe we have something into what we think are habits and then we're approached with a different situation, whether that's a stressful situation or, you know, something in our family happens and all of a sudden one day we don't do the things we always do. And then it's a question of the next day, do we go back or, or is that lost for a while? So sometimes we lose those, those habits we thought we had and it, it needs to be renewed again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. Anybody else have, does that resonate with you? The reason why I bring this up is because I think, oh, it's just another Habits of Health call. And I listen to the Habits of Health call. I listen to it on Tuesday mornings and it's on, I listen to the podcast. So if, if you don't know what podcasts are, you should check into them. They'll, they'll be really good. They automatically deliver content. So you can go to a Download a podcast player and search for TSFL and you'll find them. And you click one time to subscribe and they deliver them every week to your phone, right? And so I'm listening to um, David Bush. I, I called him up after the podcast and I said, I was getting a little vitamin D this morning. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, a little vitamin David Bush. And he laughs at me. And, but he was just talking about health and about um, being active and, you know, um, how Take Shape for Life's programs can, can um, complement uh, healthy, active lifestyles. And it was just, I mean, I was on the podcast, but I still listened to it again, and I, and I refreshed or renewed some of the things that I had already heard. And so we've got an event coming up on May 17th, and if you were at the last one, I encourage you to come. But Here's my challenge to you. Don't invite the world to come. You don't know the world and they won't come anyway. But just invite one person. If everybody brought one person, we'd have 2,000 people on this next one. And we can handle six. 
So if some of you want to invite two, you can, I'm giving you permission. But if you think about the idea of I just want to invite so many people, you may not be as deeply intentional about actually having them come. So you just sort of sprinkle a bunch of seeds and hope some fall on some good soil. But what if you carefully planted one seed and you watered it and you made sure? I bet that's, I bet they would come. Um, so this is the idea of, of getting it out to somebody. And really what this did, we had five people join our team after listening to that. And many of them were over in the Spokane area. And we had a, a health party, uh, our uh, healthy happy hour. And they said that, that that benefits of health coaching answered a bunch of really of questions that they sort of had out there that were these unknowns that kept them from going, I want to do that. And so that's what this event's going to be like. So it comes up on the 17th, providing Dan's, Dan's mom is in pretty poor health. And so if, she, if it takes a turn for the worse, um, we'll probably figure, probably David Bush and I will be hosting it, I assume, I don't know. But um, we're, um, we, it's going to be a little bit fi finer tuned format. Um, we're going to take Dan off of camera a little bit because he looks down sometimes when he's really thinking. And so we'll just pause his camera during those times and then we'll ask him a question and then we'll have him on camera again. So it'll be a little more um, FaceTime with him. But we love stopping him and asking him questions and interrupting and that kind of stuff. And it makes it very fresh. It's a very different format than a PowerPoint and a present, a lecture. It's not going to be like that. So, um, so that's coming up then. And then convention. Uh, convention happens on July 21st to the 23rd. And I remember a few years ago, I asked uh, one of my coaches, I said, would you like to go to convention? And she goes, well, I can't afford it. And I said, slow down, rewind. What was the question I asked? She said, would you like to go? And I said, would you? She goes, yeah, but I can't afford it. And I said, that's okay. We'll figure that one out. And so we, we figured out she had to help 12 people in the next two months in order to pay for her trip. Well, she helped like 18 and she went with her trip paid for and then some and came home with um, a breakthrough that she would have missed had she not been there. So my question is to you is what if there was a breakthrough waiting for you at this convention? And it, was, it wasn't anything Dr. A said. It was something the person sitting next to you said after the meeting was over. Or you were sitting at lunch and you talked to another coach and you just related and all of a sudden something just popped in your head. Well, this is what happens. There's, this is a breakthrough rich environment and those kinds of things happen all the time. So I want to encourage you, figure it out. If you've got something on your calendar that's movable, I don't know, maybe move it and come dip into the breakthrough pool. It's July 21st to the 23rd and it's in Austin, Texas. And um, we usually bunk four people to a room. Um, and, uh, so it's like $180 a night divided by four chump change cheap, right? So let's figure out if it's cost that's keeping you there, let's figure out how to solve that problem. Um, anyway, so I wanted to make sure you knew about that. And what if you were to actually think about somebody that you would love to attend? that's not even a coach. I guarantee they won't come unless you tell them about it. But what if you invited them to come? I don't know. Be kind of fun. So a lot of you guys were at a breakthrough and, and realized what co coaching was really like because you met somebody not on stage that was doing it and you related and it changed your life. Linda's in the chat window here um, talking about it is a big deal and, um, uh, and she's willing to room with somebody. So how about them apples? So um, anyway, so it's in Austin, Texas. Um, and I was, so those are the two events I wanted you to think about. And then um, here's a question. Um, in our lives, when we're thinking about the things that are important to us, and so you can unmute yourself and give an answer what you think. I'm looking for a specific answer, but what speaks the loudest? Who wants to take a – it's pretty vague, but I just want to say, in our lives, what speaks the loudest? Go ahead, Linda. What you do. What you do. She nailed it. Boom. That's right. So if you're trying to help other people, what speaks loudest and you want, to, you want them to know that this works, what speaks loudest? Your example. Are you nailing it? 
are you working your program and every week you're stepping on that scale and going owned it are you fighting for your health right if your desire is to really care for other people and inspire them to say wait a minute I want some of that then you nail it and it's gonna help you and them so what speaks loudest is what you do imagine if I was getting healthy but I but I spoke about unhealthy things but I still was getting healthy what speaks the loudest the results I get what I'm doing so I always told my kids that if your words match up with your actions that's a nice compliment but all I care about is your actions <laughs> and I think that as a Christian my um if I tell God I'm gonna do something and do something different that's a problem right God watches my actions and if my words align with my actions then I'm in integrity but I, my actions are what speaks in all situations so just think about that any comments who want to, anybody want to add to that? go ahead Bob it you walk your talk yeah there you go yep and even if, if you don't talk and you just walk I think that's okay I think that's good enough yeah mm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we want them to. Well, I'm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, we want integrity. Yeah. Integrity yeah. is what we say and what we do are the same. Yes. So, and I, and there's plenty of grace. We're working on that. Sometimes I'm not always doing. I'm saying things that I want to do, but I'm not quite doing them yet. I'm working on it totally. Right. But what it what speaks loudest is what I do. Right. And so that I can't get around that. Yep. So. Um. Excellent. And then, um, so the next two things, there's this idea of transactional living and transformational living. And as coaches and clients, here's um, when, a, when someone sees you making changes in your life, what do they ask you? What's that? What are you doing? Yep. What are you doing? They ask you for the transaction. They want to know what you're doing so they can push that lever, click that switch, and they can do that. And there is a transactional decision making and relationships are necessary, clearly. But we have to balance that with transformational conversations. So when someone asks me a transactional question, like if you say, well, how do I sign up a client? I could tell you how to do that, but if you, don't even, if you haven't even talked to anybody, I'm probably gonna talk to you about, well, why do you wanna know that? I wanna talk about the transformational side of it. I wanna talk to you about what, why do you wanna coach? Why do you wanna help people? Before I'm gonna tell you how to do that. Or same thing with weight loss. Before I tell you how, or at one strategy that's, will help you to lose your weight, it might be good to know why. So you see the balance between the transactional and the transformational. There's a balance there. Uh, Angel, Angel you had, you've been nodding quite a bit here. Did you have, what's that meaning to you? I unmuted you, but what's, what, what are you, what's going through your mind as I'm talking through this? Well, it's um, just since Jeff and I have been doing this since January, it's, you know, he is asked all of the time and like Aaron Mahoney being in the military, um, they work a lot of nights and just been going in for some day work lately. And he is asked all the time, my gosh, what are you doing? I mean, they see a difference in him. Yep. So, um, and it's, you know, we just got back from vacation and we've been asked, we've been asked a lot and, um, we, Pulled it off well, so mm -hmm. it, it was. You know, we we came back like you asked me. How did I want to get back on that plane? Yes, <laughs> and that stuck with me. I did. I put on one pound eight days in Hawaii, and, and Jeff didn't put on many. Yes, so, so I've lost us two. So. Good job. So let's so let's talk about that because I we had a conversation. This is this is a great sort of. I hadn't planned for this, but this is a great topic. So, um, Anjo, she was getting ready to go on a vacation, and many of you coaches will have an opportunity to walk someone through a vacation. And many of you will be going on a vacation between now and the day you die, even if you haven't planned it. 
Trust me, there's one out there somewhere, okay? You might even go to Hawaii for eight days. I don't know. And so I said, um, Angel and Linda, we got together and we said, let's, the question I ask her is, how do you want to get on the plane coming home? How do you want to show up at the airport? Do you want to show up with regrets and with some, you know, you want to be struggling and you want to, or do you want to show up and say, I own, I owned it. I, I, I made choices. And so tell, you said that, that stuck in your head. Tell me about, tell me about what you mean by that. Well, it was things like, I mean, I was going to Hawaii for the first time. We were celebrating my sister-in-law's uh, 40th birthday. And so I knew that there would be dessert involved at some point. And it was something else that you said to me. And I, believe it was either I don't know if it was another client or if it was um, one of the coaches who said told you that you passed along to me was that they waited for their dessert for the last night or something like mm, that. That was Cora. So Cora I kind Cora. of had that kind of in the back of my head like I am we're going to yeah we we're going to be eating out a lot we were at a, at a house as well and we could prepare food but we were on the go a lot I knew that we were going to be eating food out now I could have had dessert every night for seven nights and that would have been disastrous but Jeff and I just talked about this I talked with my mother-in-law when I got there just again like you said and said you know let's have a healthy partnership here and um, not so that she was telling me what to eat or oh should you be eating that but just so that I had that accountability and then Jeff and I split everything uh, we did not have an entree that we did not split so we were having, we had a lot of raw fish. We had ahi and we had mahi-mahi and all of this stuff, but we split everything. And I know that that helped immensely as I watched, not to throw my brother-in-law under the bus, but he's not on this, nor is he interested at this moment. He's just not there as he ate his big old plate, you know, of entree and, you know, had some of the six appetizers that he ordered or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it was it was just choices it was just um just knowing ahead of time that i wanted to enjoy some authentic food from hawaii but i didn't want to sabotage what i've been working so hard mm -hmm. for yeah and what i've had great results with i Perfect. didn't want to come home and just feel sick to my stomach and regretful and yeah. look back and get why it was a disaster because it you, was not. <laughs> so the Fabulous. feeling, uh, Angel, the feeling that you're feeling right now, enjoy it because you earned it. Seriously, that's what it feels like to earn it. Great coaching because well, and, sure. You know, my brother-in-law said, "What do you do? You get a cheat day, right?" And Jeff and I both piped in. My husband's in the next room, so I keep pointing. We both piped in, going, "No, no, 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 not a cheat day. We make a choice." to eat such and such, you know, for a meal or to not. But if I did, I knew that I was choosing something that had more calories or was yeah. higher. Yeah. But I knew I was also having something because I was in Hawaii and a mango in Hawaii and a mango here is not the same thing, yeah. which I didn't either, but I've learned. But yeah. I it. I didn't go and have six mangoes. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, I hadn't perfect. had it until then because I'm still on the five and one. Yep. So Good job. Was, Thank you. Linda. Thanks so much. Linda, you had your hand up. Go ahead, and then Don, you're next. Um, I, I, was, I say I think it's important to recognize that uh, she, you know, this was awesome uh, health coaching because knowing that she was going on vacation, her health coach then said, what's your plan for success? Because if you don't have a plan, you, you surely, right? What do they say? If you don't, you if fail. You don't, if you don't plan... You right. plan to fail or something like that, yeah. If you so, fail a plan, you'll plan to fail. You're you plan to fail. So right up front, her health coach had a plan for her to succeed. Mm -hmm. yep. Obviously, yep. Awesome, uh, Don. Yeah, Craig. Um, as you know, from when we were up in Portland talking to you, uh, we are headed for Pearl Harbor the eighth of June, and. I just got inspired, Angel. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your input. Well, good. Craig. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it was 
you just, it was a couple of days before we went that we met like this for, I don't know, 30 minutes or something. And he just put all of these things in my head to, I could have really sabotaged everything, but right. it's, it, and I've told Craig this, it's kind of, I have teenagers, uh, 17, 18 year olds. And um, if they don't know what they're going to do out on a date before they're in a situation, if they haven't made that decision in their head beforehand, they're going to get themselves into a predicament that they don't want to be in perhaps. Absolutely. And I've done the same thing with that. And that's exactly what Linda and Craig have shown me. Yep. So I'm well prepared. By the way, you guys, here's, here's this. I mean, I've learned these coaching skills by doing it. And guess what? You guys all are on the same level because you guys all have had the same coaching lesson. Right now, each one of you could walk somebody through a, uh, a process before they go, someone goes on vacation, before you go on vacation. You now have, have the skills to do that. You ask the question, how do you want to show up? What, do you want, what does it want to look like? And then you talk through that. So, because if, if Angel said, I want to show up equal or really close to equal when I come back, and I said, okay, so what, what are your tools you're bringing? She brought a bunch of meal replacements with her. Well, if she didn't bring meal replacements and she wanted to show up even, I would be asking her, um, how? Do, yeah, how would you do that? Like, I don't know how you would do that. I don't know how I would do that. That would be really hard. And then we talked about meal times. Okay, what's breakfast going to look like? Right, and we walk through like the day. Like, what's your activities going to look like? What's this going to look like? And we came up with some strategies. One day, I had breakfast that was not my, you know, meals that I brought with me. Um, two times, and one of those times, I really had like four bites of what Jeff had because it was a big Hawaiian thing. And like I said, he was very careful, and he came back the same way. He's in maintenance. Mm -hmm. I am, I am not, I'm still on the five and one, but I did bring my meal replacements and I used them. I did choose. I knew that, and I was okay with this, that I would not remain in fat burn yeah. at that time. I was doing more of a, a, you know, um, four and two. And there was a couple of days I did three and three, mm -hmm. but I, I always had meal replacements with yep. me and that always sustained me and gave me my energy and, yeah. I know it's perfect. Great job. Bobette, you had your hand up. Thank you. I, I call them rules of engagement. Nice. Because I have them all set. I write them down and I have them with me and I look at them every day to where if this happens, then this is what I'm going to do. And if this happens with something else, I have an alternate B to go to. Mm, and I take plan. it with me whenever I go on a vacation, and I just call it my my ROEs. They're my rules of engagement. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Good stuff, guys. Super duper. Wow. So these this is the kind of level of coaching. I mean, if you think about it, if you, I, I just decided when I was a coach that I wanted to become the best coach I could be. I was going to become a master health coach, no matter how long it took, and I've got a lot of room to go but I've come a long way too. And so I hope you have that idea in your mind that you just be the best health coach you can be and keep getting better, right? And so I, I love the idea to have a plan for vacation. Everybody goes on vacation once in a while. And, and I love it when my clients come back losing weight on vacation and everybody there is going, what did you do? You know, when they get back and it's just, yeah, I had, actually I never was sick. I never had diarrhea. I never was throwing up. I never missed any events because my body was just not doing well because I abused myself with whatever this kind of fun <laughs> we think about food is, you know. And then Cora gave me the idea. She said I waited to have dessert to the last meal of the last day and I knew I was getting on the plane the next morning so it wouldn't be this, well, I've already had dessert. I'm just going to be off program until I get home. That prevented that, that psychology. And so when she told me that, I'm like, oop, I'll take that one and put it in my pocket. And then I'll use that one again. Now you guys all have it in your pocket. You can. So um, anyway, great stuff, guys. Um, so that is, um, those were the basics that I wanted to cover tonight. Just talking about the transaction versus the transformation with folks. And then the, a couple of events we have coming up. And then the idea of um, 
uh, something new versus something being renewed in your mind. And um, thanks for showing up uh, every week, guys. And I love working with you. And some of the trainings that we do are a little, they're not as transactional. Some of there was some transaction here, but there was hopefully a good dose of transformation. And so to me, this is what makes this worth doing is um, because I'm in this for the long haul. I want this to change me. If it doesn't change me and I stay the same, it's not good for me. (laughs) And I see you guys changing too. And it's so amazing for those of you who've been coming a while to just see the, I can go back a year and look at your faces and look at, and you're different. Like you guys really do change. So anyway, any, uh, I'd love to toss it out. We got a few minutes left. If you guys have any questions or comments, um, jump in. Okay, I have a comment. Yeah, hi, Bob. Um, the reason I enjoy coming to these things is I always learn something new or a different way to do something from somebody else. Mm-hmm. It's not just me having to try to figure something out. Right. I listen to what other people do and how they do it and see if it works for me. Mm-hmm. If it works for me, great. Yep. If it doesn't, well then... I listen to somebody else. Yep. So it's just the, it's the community end of it and listening to what everybody has to say Mm -hmm. and trying to incorporate that into where you may be struggling. Yep. Myself may be struggling. Sure. And that, you know, I don't know if you guys know of somewhere else on the internet, that's a weekly thing that's free to just show up. Let me know. I'd like to go check it out right? So I don't know where these things are, but if I knew about them, I would go check them out. I find some of these things on podcast and, and I have, this is available on a, um, on Vimeo or YouTube, but, um, think about the idea of what this is because you may come each week and you make sure you get yourself here. I would just challenge you to really think about the value of what this brings to you. And if you think about it, is there any, do you think that there's nobody else you know? Maybe you just haven't thought about it. I wonder if a friend of mine would like to come here. I find huge value in this. Well, I'm sure there's people you know would find huge value too. And what if you invited them? What if they were able to come here and they contributed something because they showed up and we all grew exactly. because of it? Exactly. So I just want to always in your mind when you're coaching your clients to remember that we have this Tuesday night thing. It's total of an hour and a half. It's a little bit of a time commitment, but to me, I mean, it's better than watching TV is I get to interact with you guys and I get to learn from you. I'm so happy to see Linda, you, uh, Linda Hildebrand for you coming back. It's been a while since I've seen you and, um, and the other Linda, I'm glad to see you here too. <laughs> uh, but thank you all for showing up here each week and a great, um, Angel, the, uh, your feedback of, I'm just so proud of you. Good job. That is so exciting. Yep. Yep. All right, guys. Well, that's going to conclude it for tonight. We'll see you again next week. And um, keep doing, keep doing your stuff. See you guys.